You are listening to the Sinister Dreamcast Network. Hello again, Internet. Welcome back to Scenario Store News. I'm Juliana. And I'm Kirsten. How are you, Kirsten? Well... <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah so the nail biter concluded yeah uh. um, you know usually we're like 75 percent salt <laughs> it's pretty much 102 percent salt at this point yeah so. although we did get some of our salt out on sunday which is why we're recording on tuesday yeah uh, we actually did go to a protest yeah um so because this is going to be a fucking long four years. Yep. Full um, of protest and anger. And salt. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm really, really glad. Like, I, it was a last minute decision for me to go. Like, you, mm. I knew you were already planning to go. It was a split second last minute decision for me. Especially because it's like... What the decision basically came down to was, like, the plans that I had are no longer. Mm. And time and my disabled ass means that I'm going to want to go mm. to a billion times more of these than I'm actually going to get to go to. I can go to this one. So mm. let's just fucking go. And I think it was a nice one. Um, it remained peaceful. It did get news coverage. There was a good turnout. Yeah, the only the only problems we had was when we started marching. And yeah. we were marching through the north side of Pittsburgh, Mm -hmm. around the stadiums mm -hmm. during a Steelers game. Yeah. So there were some bystanders who gave us some shit. Like, people gave a yeah. shit during the actual protest. Like, there were a few people who walked past and were like, Trump, mm -hmm. baby! Mm -hmm. To which most of the crowd just started shouting jag off back at them because yes. that is the best Pittsburghese word. Right? It really is. It's such a good word. Like, that is the only word in Pittsburghese mm -hmm. that I truly condone. Mm -hmm. I still don't really say it much because I can't really bring myself to use Pittsburghese because my mother speaks it fluently to the point that I want to strangle her. Mm -hmm. But, like, I know a lot of people who ironically say yins and I can't even yeah. do that. Like, sometimes I think it, but I can't say it because yeah. I'm just so used to my mom. Yeah, I more so think yins. I say drag off a lot in the car. It's a very good angry driving word. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so. So, yes, we're coping through the salt? Yeah. Um, as I told Juliana, whenever I in inevitably get heart disease, I'm going to sue America because my salt <laughs> level is way too fucking high and it's all its fault. <laughs> yep. Um. Yeah. Also, just shout out to everybody who doesn't suck in the country right now, mm. because the one positive thing I've seen as a result of the election is the solidarity is strong. Yeah. Like, it's beautiful. Mm. Um, just the people coming together, especially the people who are in any, any part of their identity is at risk under Trump's America. Mm. Um just so much support, like, day, uh, like, then, like, you know, next day, like, first full day, like, you know, November 9th, and I've actually already seen people posting, like, 11, 9, never forget. Mm. Um, like, I was just, like, I was seeing people, you know, like, handing, you know, giving out, like, uh, suicide hotline numbers, mm. and just basic, like, here's my shoulder to cry on, people in other countries being like, no, I'm dead serious, I have mm. a room. Right. Americans can come. Um, and I've even seen, like, opposite suicide pacts. Like, basically, like, the panic was so strong at first that I have literally seen people going around saying, okay, look, if you don't kill yourself, I won't. Mm. I got at least one of those messages. Mm. So, <laughs> like, it's really shitty that we're banding together so solidly because we're terrified. But, right. like, it's something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, and a lot of different groups, like you said, are coming together, too, which I think is basically what we need right now. Yeah. We need all the groups to get together so that we can defeat this monster. Yes, <laughs> and also, just a blanket statement, mm -hmm. uh, if your family went for Trump and you're having uh, trouble reconciling with that and understanding why they obviously don't care about you, <laughs> my mom is now your mom. She has volunteered herself to be every Trump family's, like, lost child's mm -hmm. new mom, so... Which, I mean, your mom is, like, really 
She she is one of my favorite people for the reactions for all of this, like because she's crushing it. I like, have literally <laughs> never been closer to my mom than I have ever since the election results. Yeah, like I think <laughs> like your mom needs week. to like head something. Like she needs to be like my mom won the election. Yeah, yeah. Like I want her to have a <laughs> megaphone and I want her to lead a protest rally because I would rally behind her with as much great stuff as she is saying. She wanted to come on Sunday so bad. She like she mm-hmm. literally couldn't mm-hmm. like, but she really, really wanted to. Yeah, like, she was so upset she wasn't there. Yeah, your mom. Your mom is like I love her for this more than ever. <laughs> like I loved her before. I love her more now. Yes, this is regardless of age, regardless of anything. You you have a new mom. It's okay, mm-hmm. and she's a good one. She will she will get you through this. <laughs> she will try her hardest anyway. She right? she really is though. Like she has been like seriously just been like, Oh yes, you know, until this, you know, specific name here of my new children that I love them and they're okay. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> Yeah. <sighs> so yeah, um, because we're just trying not to be. Especially for podcasting purposes. Mm-hmm. So let's move right into Interrobang. Yeah. Um So I think we should start with the one that's a little less on the happy side because the other two are consumable. Mm. So we should probably just keep those together. Makes sense. Um, actually, we have consumables and fangirling and in Terabang. I Excellent. guess we're just hungry this week. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, so first off, this almost counts as fangirling because it's Ikea. Right? Oh, God, Ikea. I love you so much. I love you like I love like, Gabani. It has to go in in Terabang because... It's the perfect intersection mm. of, of fangirling and state of things, mm. but it doesn't really fit fully into either, so it has to go into a terabang. Exactly. Like, this just had to happen that way. Mm-hmm. Um, Ikea surprises visitors by recreating Syrian home inside their store. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a, it was a, an Ikea in, let's not even try to pronounce that, Norway. Mm. Like, it looks like it's an easier one, but it's, like, because it looks easy, I'm even more afraid I'm going to fuck it up. Mm. So... <laughs> it is a Tuesday. We're not good with words on Tuesdays. This is Spell very it. accurate. Huh? Spell it. Uh, S-L-E-P-E-N-D-E-N. Like, that looks super easy, so it's just got to be wrong if I say it, because it's Tuesday. So... <laughs> I had you with the S-L-E, and that was about it. The Sleppenden? I don't know, Man. but... In Norway! Awesome place in Norway? Yeah. Um... Yeah, they worked with the Nor- the Norwegian Red Cross um, and an advertising agency called POL, and they installed a model Syrian home inside the store. It's a replica of one in Damascus um, that belonged to a woman named Rana and her family of nine. Um, the walkthrough installation, because that's, yeah, it's called 25 square meters of Syria. Mm. Uh, it's the whole house inhabited by 10 people inside 25 square meters um when we had to flee to this area to find safety we did not have enough money to rent a better place we have no money to buy mattresses and blankets or clothes for the children rana told the red cross team um like it also has like recognizable ikea posters but instead of product descriptions on them um it's stories of Syri- syrians who are you know, on a daily basis dealing with, you know, shortages of basic needs like food and water and medical supplies. Um, every price tag also features a clear call to action with a text-based donate link for visitors who want to contribute to the cause. So, hey, Ikea, I didn't know I could love you more. Basically, that's, I think, every time we bring up Ikea on this show, every single time, it's like, now I love Ikea more. How much can I love Ikea? Like, when do I legally be married to Ikea? (laughs) When does that happen? Because I think it's soon. Yes, the Ikea fandom is strong on this podcast. We did not realize that our our youth of binge-watching Fight Club was foreshadowing. (laughs) Ikea, I love you. Love you so much. But it's so, like, it's not just because the things we own end up owning us, it's because Ikea is actually a really phenomenal company and right? a great store, and they're they're just so good. I love them they're so much. They're just so good. Seriously. So, noms! Yay, noms! <laughs> um, so, Oreo's doing a thing that I desperately need to yeah. put into my face. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Real bad. Mm-hmm. Holy shit. Um, yeah. Oreo... Big Crunch Bar. Delicious. <laughs> like, even the picture looks delicious. Yeah, like, they're basically inside-out Oreos 
encased in chocolate uh-huh. and shaped like a candy bar. Yeah. Like, it's, yeah, it's milk chocolate candy, mm-hmm. and then inside it's cream cookie cream. And it looks like it's going to be thin, so I'm expecting it to be, like, crispy like a Kit Kat. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. I need it real bad. Mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. yes, please enter my mouth hole now. Yeah, like, I I didn't research enough to, like, find out, like, when I can consume this, or, like, where <gasps> I can buy it. When? Happy birthday to me in oh, January. I have to wait till January? Damn. Honestly, that's better than I was expecting. So I, mean, I think that's why I was like, ooh, it's that soon. Like, I was kind of expecting it to be like spring of 2017. I should have assumed like it was that. going to be in 2017 because this garbage year is garbage. So why should we have good chocolate? <laughs> because this garbage year is garbage. Yes. <sighs> 2017. I got yeah, also, you. seriously, watch watch this week's last week tonight holy shit like not only is it everything perfect you would expect from john oliver Mm. in the current political climate and being the last episode of last week tonight of the year but it also ends on a giant fuck you to the year as a whole so seriously this new year's is gonna be amazing because everyone's (laughs) just gonna be like it's fucking over we survived kind of maybe oh god no why (laughs) okay yeah stop it right there um well if we do need more help getting through um at least in pennsylvania that might be getting easier yay um so pennsylvania is infamously what the actual fuck when it comes to liquor laws yes um i'm pretty sure it's us and utah yeah I think you know the, big contenders the, the mormons States, right who don't drink if you don't know that about mormons they don't yeah. most of them don't drink yeah sorry nick geiger that your state sucks slightly more than ours when it comes to this mm-hmm. and then we're about to beat you even further right for once <laughs> um in 60 days, this was announced today, so 60 days as of this recording, so the, when this comes out yesterday, mm-hmm. um, there will be a new uh, legislation that will allow um, the state's more than 1,000 beer distributors to sell suds in any quantity, according to mm-hmm. the weird wording from uh, Channel 11 News, our mm-hmm. local... <laughs> Uh, this includes individual 32-ounce bottles, four-packs, six-packs, and growlers, mm-hmm. um, because, yeah, that's new. Yeah. So, you can walk into a store that sold beer and buy as much beer as you wanted. You could buy a very limited amount of beer. Ooh, at least by some stores. Like, I know at, like, grocery stores, you could buy, like, a six-pack and a half or something silly. Two six packs, maybe. Yeah, it's super recent that we could even like buy booze online. Like yeah. that's like really, really recent. Like in the past like month or so. Mm-hmm. Um, this law also lets out bars start selling alcohol at nine a.m. on Sundays <gasps> without a requirement to serve food. Allows consumers to legally participate in beer of the month clubs that ship beer directly to homes, and sporting venues can now sell mixed drinks. <gasps> Merry Christmas to me. <laughs> I, I want a beer of the month club delivered to my face <laughs> so yeah pennsylvania's doing a thing yeah we're there's finally. a wine one called club w mm, i think i saw that before because i think they used to have groupons and i could never really do it because they couldn't be shipped to me they um... advertise they advertise on a lot of podcasts they actually have you fill out a questionnaire about what kind of uh, wine you like, and they will only send you wine that fits in that palette. Ooh. Ooh. That sounds nice. Although this does specifically say that ships beer. Beer of the month clubs that ship beer. It, would probably, it says it would that figure specifically. Not wine. I, I'll research further, but I guarantee you if it's something I want, <laughs> it won't happen. But oh, I mean, well, like, we can buy, beer. we can buy things online now. True. Like, so I'm going to have to put in a bulk order to Vinic. Um, yeah, I still haven't tried that. Yeah, I need it. It's sparkly. I need it. It's delicious. Like, we, I mean, they do sell it at the liquor store that's, like, right down the street, practically. So we do need to, there's just, like, there's three flavors, and there's one I haven't found in a store. Uh. Um, But the two that I've had, Uh. the original and the ruby, are, (laughs) (laughs) it just, it tastes as good as it looks. Yay. Yeah, so. All right, future drinking podcast. Got it. Yeah, so I guess whenever the next like holiday or whatever is, or just mm. the next Me. election. <laughs> oh, Lord. 
Lord, two years, two years. But we, two years. we, yeah, you need to experience Vinick and I need to be there for this. Yay. So, future plans. Woo! Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, that takes us into fangirling. Yay, fangirling! So where should we start with fangirling? Should we start where we said we were going to start, or should we just keep going on the noms? I think we should keep going on the noms, because now I want to talk about noms all day. Yeah, um, so there's a BB-8 waffle maker? Need it so bad. Yeah, um, like, I'm not sure if I actually have to elaborate on this other Mm -hmm. than where the fuck do I buy it, because I need it. Right. I think oh. I might need a collection of waffle makers. I'm not 100% sure, but I think I'm really pretty sure. It's officially licensed. Um, where do I buy it? Where do I buy it? Where do... It's on ThinkGeek! I was going to say, course if it's, it's, on it's ThinkGeek. not on ThinkGeek, I'll be shocked. It's exclusively on ThinkGeek. It's currently available for pre-order. It's adorable because it's BB-8 and also mm-hmm. because it's waffles. Uh-huh. Uh, this is like the perfect intersection of Leslie Nope and Ben Wyatt. <laughs> Oh, they would totally own that waffle maker. Oh my god! Fun. Oh. Also, quick sidetrack. Did you see that the uh, one of the writers of Parks and Rec actually wrote an open letter to America from Leslie No yes. following the election? Because yes. I just needed to mention that that exists. Yeah. If the, if you need to pick me up, go read that because it definitely like boosts. I your definitely spirits. read it in her voice. Yeah, yeah, I read it in her voice, and it was like a call to action. I was like, I will fucking make Leslie Note proud. True story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah so I need that waffle maker. I I need the Captain America one, the one that's his shield, but I also need that, and I need them both at the same time, because I love waffles, <laughs> and I love my things. So we we uh, we pump up on Captain America and BB-8 waffles before we go and fight the establishment? I'm yes! <laughs> yes, that's what fuels me. That and salt. Yep. Yeah. Seriously, all the fucking marching we did, and I'm just like, wow, like, I don't know how I'm doing this, and you're just like, it's because of the salt. I'm right. like, it's because of the salt. And then later on, I'm like, I hurt. Yep. That's because I walked off all the salt. Right? <laughs> it definitely displaced the salt for a brief period of time. Yeah. Which just shows we need to go to more protests and be more active in our local poli- political environment so that way our salt can be displaced lately so we don't die oh nick just sent us a link yeah um the headline it's from the nerdist it just says fantastic beasts eddie redmayne passionately defends hufflepuffs yeah (laughs) (laughs) apparently the rock is a hufflepuff good Good! Good! Yes! I am so <laughs> down to share a Hogwarts house with The Rock. He is a Hufflepuff, though. He really fucking I is. I want to see him dressed up in Hufflepuff stuff. <laughs> though I'm pretty sure Newt, the character in Fantastic Beasts, uh-huh. he's a Ravenclaw. Because mm. it looks like he's wearing a Ravenclaw uh, scarf. Mm. Yeah, I'm excited to see that movie. It looks pretty good. It has 100% on Rotten Tomatoes right wow. now. Wow. Wow. I don't know how long that'll last, but right now it has 100%. Mm. But yeah, apparently Eddie Redmayne himself is also a Hufflepuff, although I have mixed opinions on him as a human, but you mm. know what? You're gonna you're gonna go hard for my Hufflepuffs right now, then I'm with you. Because mm-hmm. fuck yeah, Hufflepuff. Yeah, now I want to see what other celebrities are sorted into. Oh my god. I'm very curious Seriously, now. The Rock. The Rock is a Hufflepuff. Thank you. Thank you, universe. <laughs> And I completely believe it. He's nope. such a fucking cinnamon roll. I right. bet you Jason Momoa is a Hufflepuff, too. Because <laughs> you know him right. Probably. It's it's true. It's either that or he'd be Gryffindor. Hmm. One of the two. I just always kind of forget Gryffindor when it comes to sorting anymore, because at this point it is just like, so you're a bro? Okay, you're probably a Gryffindor. <laughs> I'm not a bro. I'm your bro, but I'm not a bro, bro. <laughs> bro, bro, I'm not a bro, bro. Well, you're not a Gryffindor. I'm, remember, I took the one and it said I was a Gryffindor. I was here. Did I was you? In this room. Yeah, because <gasps> I was mad because I wasn't Slytherin. Oh, right. Cause you, you, my brain works the same way your brain does. You know, I don't remember this. I mean, <laughs> it might even just be because I'm in this room that I remember it myself. So. That's true. <laughs> When I go home, I'm like, what am I? Who am I? Where did I take that test? Did I take that test? I don't remember taking a sorting test. 
It is weird, though, because, like, Gryffindors and Slytherins are so very much the same, mm. but, like, they're not at the same time. But then, like, Ravenclaws and Hufflepuffs have, like, nothing in common no. at all. Like, they didn't even try. Very interesting. And, like, neither of them really have anything in common with the other houses either. Yeah. Well, I guess Ravenclaw probably leans more Slytherin. Yeah. And Hufflepuff leans more Gryffindor, but not as much as I think Ravenclaw leans towards Slytherin. Yeah. Hufflepuff is kind of its own thing. It really is. It really, really... Well, because, like, you know, all the other ones were like, we only want to teach these kinds of kids, and we only want to teach these kinds of kids. And Helga Hufflepuff was like, bitch, what the fuck is wrong with you? (laughs) These are magical children. It's our duty to protect them and teach them. We accept all of them because we love them because they're magical children. And I'm like, yes. So your mother is Helga Hufflepuff? Oh my god. Your mother is simultaneously Leandra and Helga Hufflepuff. Your mother is a quandary of a human being. This is accurate. She seems to be Leandra-ing less and less, though. Yeah, I think- Like, as time goes on. I think the whole, like, holy shit, she might actually die thing kind of took a lot of edges off. On both ends. Yeah. Like, not even just in how I pe- perceived her, but in how she reacted as well. Mm. Time does do some things. Yeah. So, yes, she's morphing from Leandra to Helga. And I definitely like this version of her better. Yes. Yes. <laughs> she is everybody's mother. And we love her. Yes. The, uh, the weirdest uh, character development ever. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um... Moving on. Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, so then, uh, speaking of delightful uh, things that you can consume, mm-hmm. and also stores that you can buy things to mm. consume things, mm-hmm. um, Target. Mm-hmm. Target has some ads. Yeah. Um, remember how last year we talked about the Walmart ads that were making me uncontrollably cry? Yeah, I'm still not comfortable with how good those were. They were so good. Because Walmart is garbage, and those ads were amazing. Yeah. Um, if you don't remember their Star Wars ads of last year, where basically it was really just a feminist message, um, yeah, Target has now taken that lead. There's a rebel in all of us. Like, I can't. I just, I, I feel like that should be a political movement. I, I'm sorry. Not sorry. Can I start it? How do I start a political movement? Is this happening now? Um, I, you, you have declared it. Like, I think I that think is, it like, is done. a fantastic banner, and I, like, I, that's, yep, that's how I feel this is. Okay, this next is protest down. we go to, we're carrying starboard signs. Fuck it. Yes. Because, I mean, let's face it. The metaphor is apt. Mm-hmm. It's it. I mean, yeah. He's, yeah. I don't know if he's more Vader or more Palpatine. I mean, probably Palpatine, look at that. But... I've, I I just, uh, I mean, but yeah, the time is now to join the uh, rebellion or the resistance, whichever mm-hmm. way you want to take it. Yep. Uh, and uh, overthrow the Dark Lord. Right? Like, that's basically what I'm going to think the entire time through Rogue One. It's like, <laughs> yes, this is how to do it. <laughs> I actually have seen that, like, in signs from other people's protest yeah. marches, though. Like, I have seen people using the Starbird. Yeah. Which is, like, fantastic, because that's exactly, like, I feel like that goes over way too many heads. It's like, uh-huh. yeah, no, you know that, like, that's, they're, they're overthrowing an oppressive regime. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what's happening here. Right. I like it. I like it a lot. But yeah, apparently, apparently Target gets it. Yeah, so, <laughs> so there's a rebel in all of us. Yeah, watch the ad. Cry yourself a little cry, like I do. Because <laughs> it's so good. Um, so we also have a few music-related points of news. Yay! Um, so, so System of a Down is looking at their, doing their next album. Which I I never thought I would see another one, so I'm so freaking thrilled. I have still never seen them live, so, <laughs> yeah, fuck you both, because I know you both have. We, Nick okay. just gave me a, an evil laugh, and Kirsten's eyes just widened the fuck up at me. Wherever the fuck they are, however fucking close <laughs> they are, we're fucking going, because this needs to be fixed. I will still, though, I still, like, live in a constant state of mourning for how badly we tried and desperately wanted to go to Chicago to see them when they toured with the fucking Deftones. And That's we one of the saddest it. things of my life. 
<laughs> like, literally, like, that, it, two of my favorite bands, like. And, like, that's just such a good bill. That's just such a good bill. Like, yeah. I've only, like, I'm pretty sure I have only ever heard of two concerts with, mm. like, that perfect a billing before. Well, that one and one other. And I uh, got to go to the other one, which, which was Gogol, Bordello, and Vodka. Like, mm. that's a perfect pairing. Yeah. Um. So... Maybe System of a Down and Deftones need to tour together again. Please. <laughs> but, like, at least I've seen the Deftones. Yeah. I have never yeah. seen we're, we're System of a We're fixing that because they're going to release a new album. We're, they're going to go on tour and we're going to go because we need nice things in our life. <laughs> 2017, bring it. Don't don't challenge it. No, I'm don't not. Challenge I'm really it. not. I was actually just a, I was just about to throw an end on that. Don't, don't worry. Don't like, poke the beast. <laughs> no, because 2000 because everyone who said this year can't possibly get any worse. 2016 has said challenge accepted. Like I keep so. thinking of the the meme that's going around where it shows England and it's like you know oh look at the Brexit in America you'll never do anything as stupid as Brexit. America hold my beer. Yeah. <laughs> Like, that's how, that's how I'm, like, trying not to think of 2017 in the same vein, but I'm, like... Yeah, no, I'm just kind of, like, yeah, I'm trying to just, like, have no opinion on what it will bring. Like, the bar is very, very low, but given the current political climate, it may not even meet it. I'm aware of this. Let's just let it happen. They, like, light the bar on fire? Like, I'm not sure. There, there is no, there is no optimism. There is no pessimism. There is just acceptance to the best of my ability. But at least we're going to have new music. Yeah. What other new music are we going to have? Um, Childish Gambino Yay! also officially announced his next album. Um, so this is like the second time in not that much time that Donald Glover has been mentioned on this podcast. Right. And I think that's coming out soon, right? Um, it's called The Name of the Album is Awaken My Love. Um, he already did release one new song from it, which I haven't had a chance to listen to yet. And the album comes out on December 2nd. Soon. Um, Soon. yeah, so that's, cause I, I, I have always liked child, like I've always liked Donald yeah. Glover as a whole, uh-huh. like in any aspect of his career, I enjoy his acting and I enjoy, right? I enjoy Childish Gambino. Me so. too. Do you know how he got the name Childish Gambino? No. He, uh, seriously, this is the, I think this is my favorite thing in the world. Uh-huh. Um, he legit just went to a Wu-Tang Clan name generator <laughs> and that's what he got. That's that's <laughs> completely 100% appropriate, and I love it even more now. Uh, the next Lando Cal- Calrissian, everyone. <laughs> uh, I'm not upset about it. Not yeah. in the slightest. So, um, also, apparently, and of course, ever since I learned this, I now am just, like, super pumped about it. Mm. Um, Andrew Eldritch had said in an interview uh, before the election that if America were to actually be so fucking ridiculous as to elect Donald Trump, that he would have to write new music. There would be no way he wouldn't be able to respond to that. I'm not even sure how long it's been since the Sisters of Mercy have released new music. Mm. Um, I'm just going to... It's a while. It's a while. Like... It's gotta have, like, I, I don't, like, it didn't really, it didn't say in the article, because I was trying to find this, but it's like, I can't imagine it's been any less than, like, 20 years, like, because, like, most of their stuff's from, like, the early 80s, um, so, yeah, it looks like we might be getting new music from the Sisters of Mercy for the first time in God knows how long, um, There has been no follow-up on this as far as I have seen, and believe me, I'm fucking watching, um, since the election results. Um, So, you know, hopefully (laughs) hopefully this remains a thing. Yeah, apparently he said this in an interview on June 21st. Um, Yeah, I can tell you one thing. If Donald Trump actually does become president, that will be reason enough for me to release another album. I don't think I could keep quiet if that happened. So, yeah, um, hurry. Right. Although I also, I, I mentioned that I said this on Facebook today because it occurred to me, like, I should really stop being like, so, any news about that new Sisters of Mercy album? Mm-hmm. Because, A, like, I should probably actually just wait for any kind of news about it, like Andrew's writing or something. Right. And then I also probably shouldn't tempt 2016 to take Andrew Eldritch too. Right. So. <laughs> like it really is coming for people this year 
This year is just coming for everything. Yeah, when I posted that on on Facebook, our friend Keegan commented on it, and they were like, and Dr. Avalanche will get a virus. (sighs) Dr. Avalanche is the only other original remaining member of the Sisters of Mercy. He's the drum machine. Mm. (laughs) So. (laughs) It's 2016. You never know. You never know. Don't just don't just, just don't fuck with it. Like, no. oh, this will be really great if this happens. I probably shouldn't. Mm-hmm. Right. Curb all of your enthusiasm because you never know. Yes. Survive, please. Please. <laughs> Give us things. We need things. <laughs> <sighs> um. Speaking of things that we need. Yes. Um. So, a fucking Invader Zim movie. What the hell? Maybe, uh, per maybe half. Yeah. This might be, might be a thing. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, apparently, we can neither confirm nor deny this. Yeah, this is definitely, it's a rumor, but it's a rumor, it's an intriguing rumor, I think is a good way to put it. Yeah, because basically what happened is, I cannot remember the guy's name offhand now, but he created some other show that was popular for a bit there, I think. Mm. And he, somebody asked him on Tumblr, like, um... Like, just something like, you know, what if you and Honan Vasquez made, you know, an Invader Zim movie for Nick? And the guy's response was, Honan actually is. I'm not part of it, but I'm really excited about it. Um, this Tumblr post has since been deleted. Mm. Screen caps still exist, but, yeah, the post itself is actually gone. And any attempts to ask Honan Vasquez about it on Twitter directly have been met with very typical Honan Vasquez kind of responses Mm. um but they are all effectively denials Mm. so nick's this nick's theory not nickelodeon the channel (laughs) uh producer nick's theory Mm. (laughs) is that yes this is totally happening just by answering that ask honestly he violated something so he had to take it down and there's still like secrecy going on Mm -hmm. but fingers crossed because this would be I, i i need it I need more Invaders in my life, period. Yeah, I haven't read any of the comics, have you? Because they did bring it back in comics, but like... No, my comic reading is definitely down. And yeah. it shouldn't be. But... My, my reading in general yeah. has, has kind of hit a downturn again, unfortunately. Um, I'm even struggling mm. with reading other fix these days. Mm. So I mean, the last few months have been a shit show in life, so... Yeah. Uh, but I mean, if uh, Jean of the Homicidal Maniac is any kind of metric to hold uh, the Invader Zim comics to, then you know they'll be really good. Yeah, those comics are still amazing. I'm sorry. They're just... I, I st- Mine are on Nick's shelf somewhere. Mm. <laughs> mm. I still have them. Yeah, I found them in, in the moving. I found those in Sailor Moon comic books. <gasps> yeah, those oh. are so pretty. <laughs> yeah, I remember just going through your huge fucking collection of Sailor yeah. Moon comics and just like pouring through them because like I didn't get it I just didn't get it I didn't get Sailor Moon I did not yeah. un- you know I was like 12 or 13 and I'm just like that's that seems just dumb and you're like no <laughs> I was like, we let this. me fix this for you and then I was like because <gasps> right. it was so good yeah, it was so he also yeah I was not expecting them to get that dark right Ah, Sailor Moon. Ah, so underrated. Mm. I really... I've never actually watched Sailor Moon, though. I've only read Sailor Moon. Um, I recommend watching Sailor Moon Crystal. Don't watch the American version of Sailor Moon because garbage. That's what I've heard. Mostly it's from like... you for most of my life. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> they're cute. They're nostalgic uh-huh. for me. But then when you watch Sailor Moon Crystal, you're like, oh yeah, this is the comic books, right? Um, yeah, I had also heard that, like, they were going to be doing a redub of the original. Yeah, I'm, uh, Crystal's kind of like that, because gotcha. it's, it's following more of that animation style, and some of it is more, more similar to that, like, that anime, but it's more the comic books than that one was. Gotcha. Yeah. Like, Which is what did, I want anyway, so. Yeah, like, when when they did just redub it, like, they fixed some of it, because some of it was just, like, like, if you knew what was actually happening, you were like, are you serious? This is what you're making them say? Are you crazy? They're so, cousins. Yeah, and it's like, <laughs> boo-boo shit. So, yeah. 
I, I, rec- I, I mean, definitely watch Crystal first, and then mm. you'll have maybe nostalgia feels for the other. Gotcha. Yeah, but yeah, they're amazing. <sighs> <laughs> oh yeah, speaking of nostalgia feels, going, going just a, a quick throwback to last week. Um, so yeah, we also rewatched the Matrix sequels. Mm. They hold up every bit as well as you would think they would. Mm. As in, they're not great. <laughs> but they didn't get worse. See, that, that, I think that's the surprising thing, is that they didn't get worse, that they just remained bad. Yeah. They, just, <laughs> they were never good. They never will be good. The end. Yeah. Research completed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, yeah. It's just... They're not good. They're not good. Mm. <laughs> it's like, I feel like I watched them with, like, the same lens that I watched them for the first time, too, which was just like, this is not good, but I want to like it so bad, but this is not good, but I really yeah. want to like it. Like, I still, even rewatching it, like, it's like, I'm an adult now. Mm. You know, I was still in high school when these both came out. Like, I'm an adult now. A lot of time has passed since I've seen them. Like, maybe... Uh-huh. maybe that time will have a difference. Like, maybe they actually aren't as bad as I remember them. No, they are. Oh. But it's still, like, I still really wanted to like them. Right? <laughs> I, I think it's because I really like the concept of the Matrix. Yeah. And, and the first one is still yeah. good. So I think that's where that, that need comes from. Yeah. Like, it could have been good. There's so much potential there. Like, there yeah. was so much potential for sequels, and the Wachowskis did not deliver mm. so maybe one day there will be and people will do it right remember when we used to passionately argue about whether or not neo died remember when we passionately argued about a lot of people dying or not dying that seems to be an area of contention in our friendship yeah usually the answer is my my takeaway was uh. yes they died canon is like yeah they're totally dead and you're like nope no one is fucking dead. <laughs> no one ever fucking dies. Although, if the Wachowskis do still ever make the Cowboy Bebop movie that they want to make, then apparently Jeez. that will shit on the canon we finally both accepted. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm still very, very, very vehemently anti that movie ever coming no, to fruition. No, please, please, don't at, do it to me. At least at this point... There's no way they... I can't imagine they would still want to cast Keanu as Spike. Please, God, no. Please, God, no. Because that... Just don't cast anybody because they'll make the movie. No one can be Spike Spiegel. No one. No one. You know one. what? I would love to see Keanu Reeves cosplay Spike. Yeah, Aesthetically, okay. I can see it. Okay. But I don't think he could actually play him. No. Unless, like, they just, like, he didn't actually speak. He just moved his mouth and they just dubbed the actual anime, like, over him. <laughs> I would I, that that might be okay. Keanu Reeves voiced by Steve Bloom. Yeah, yes. that's okay. I like that. I support this. That's how I will watch this movie. Okay, see, so and now now we're making progress, right? If he talks about this movie that may or may not happen, my voice is very very important. So, other TV shows you've been watching a lot of lately? Um, yeah, <laughs> just, um, we just need to get. Yeah, we're gonna go on here for a while. So, um, TV show that you really should start watching, unless you are someone that would be triggered by um, scenes of rape or assault or violence of any sort. Yeah, she told me about this show. Like, this show is so awesome. Like, I just got into this really great show. You should never ever watch it. <laughs> No. But didn't you say they actually, like, show trigger warnings at the beginning of every yeah, episode? Yeah, at the beginning of the episode, they have a trigger warning. That's amazing. Yeah, because, like, I think it's the same with, like, Jessica Jones, where, like, watching it and knowing what triggers are mm. and um, people who get triggers, like, how, how they are triggered, like, being that person, like, watching it, you're like, oh, oh, they got this really, really right. You can't watch this. <laughs> so what, what, yeah. what was this show, Kirsten? Um, it's called Sweet Vicious. It's on MTV. Yeah, um, of all... Yeah. Yeah, when you were describing this to me, you're like, I was, I'm really impressed with MTV. I'm like, I was not expecting you to go no. there. No, <laughs> like, because I saw, I saw things about the show and I was like, all right, this looks like something I would like. It's a vigilante who beats the shit out of rapists. That's, oh. that's definitely down my ballpark. Like, that's, <laughs> that's what I like to see. Give me that. Um... So the premise is that uh, there's a sorority girl who is basically a vigilante who is going around beating the shit out of rapists um, because 
if, if you don't have your head buried in the sand um yeah a sexual assault on college campuses is a big huge giant problem because people either don't report it or they report it and nothing gets done brock turner what yeah and then they continue to not be reported because nothing happened when they were and then people wonder why they're not being reported yeah and they actually tackle that on the show nice um a lot of the people like who she finds out have been assaulted um it's either through her survivor support group, uh, which actually, I take that back. I don't believe that they call it a su- survivor support group. Mm. I think they just, like, literally call it a support group. Gotcha. Because they even have done it so right that they stay away from saying survivor. Mm. Like, yeah. So, <laughs> I love this show. Yeah, the, everything you've described it to me, it's like, this sounds really amazing. There is mm. no way in hell I can ever ever watch no. this i should never ever watch this but god i wish i could like see what you're explaining to me mm. but no no i should not no, no. <laughs> um reason why if you are someone who does get triggered or would be triggered by things like this um is because the vigilante is a sorority girl who was assaulted she was raped um did it report it because she she unfortunately knew that nothing would happen from it um, and instead, she has turned into a vigilante who is going after rapists. Um, the hero we need. Yeah. <laughs> um, she is befriended by a girl who is a computer hacker, um, who goes with her to a police station at one point, like, I think it's in the first episode, but sits next to a girl who is there trying to report that she was raped. She has been taken, or the campus police told her to go to the police. She then spent a day and a half at the police station trying to give a statement, but they keep not having her give a statement. Mm. Why? Because her racist is going and being scouted by the NBA, and he's their top basketball player. Huh. What so do you they're, know? Yeah, so they are really just not yeah. pulling punches. Yeah, and um, their response is they go get the guy, beat the shit out of him, then, when they start to walk away and he scoffs at them, they break his fucking wrist. <laughs> Good luck with the NBA. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, the reason why I do like this show, though, um, is they do not shy around the word rapist. Um, it's never, you know, they were victimized or they were inappropriately touched. No, they were raped. Like, MTV is not sugarcoating that. Which I expected them to fully sugarcoat it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I also expected that, you know, at some point there would be, you know, a false claim or something. Mm. Hasn't happened. Probably won't happen because they're getting it fucking right. Um, and like I said, the main character, she is, um, she was raped and she has body memories. She has flashbacks. She's going through the whole thing, but she is getting help. Like, she is in the mm. support group. Um, yeah, so it's, it's only three episodes in, so that's all I have to report as far as plot, but give it a fucking try if you can. If you can't, I'll keep you informed. Yeah, because that (laughs) does sound, like, amazing. Like, the fact that, like, they just cover everything and get it so right. Didn't you say that they Mm. even, like, are very, like, definitely like, no, Mm. do not forgive, do not forgive. Yeah, so far no one has been like, oh, you should forgive him, or you need to get over this. Mm. Like, even the computer hacker girl is like, why haven't you turned your rapist in yet, and why haven't we beaten the shit out of him? (laughs) And there is, like, some, again, it gets into, you know, the real issues that, you know, this happens a lot. It turns out that her rapist is her best friend's boyfriend. So how are you going to tell your best friend that her boyfriend raped you when they were together? Also, he's the captain of the football team. Huh? Yeah, so it's it's a very, like, I really do think that this is, like, a very powerful show, and they're definitely getting it right, and um, even their ads for it, um, they give you rape statistics. They're like... Oh, wow. Yeah, they, like, do, like, a countdown. I meant to look that up before we started, but... Look it up. It's on MTV's website. It's on the um, Sweet Vicious's Facebook. But yeah, every every episode they use like actual statistics, actual facts. That's awesome. Yeah, the show is fucking fantastic. If you can give it a try, because it should get ratings. Because this is an important issue that they are not sugarcoating. Yeah, I'm really 
words I never thought I'd say. I'm really impressed with MTV. Right? And they're also, <laughs> um, in the show, too, they're also delving into um, race issues. Um, Ooh. Because there has been at least one instance where the cops have basically stopped and frisked with no real reason. Um, um, yeah. So, it, they're doing it right on this show. They, they have some good points. And I intend to watch the hell out of it. Nice. And I'll keep you posted because you can't watch it because now. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, all right. So a uh, couple couple more points right. we have still in uh, fangirling. Yeah, fangirling we have a lot of because we needed it. Yeah. So um, actually we have we have three more points. We are we are taking it. We are winding mm. down on fangirling. Uh, Beauty and the Beast trailer. Yes. So pretty. So pretty. Like, I think that was my most important thing for Beauty and the Beast, was it needed to be aesthetically Beauty and the Beast. And it is. I read that apparently one aspect they are changing of the story uh-huh. is that um, instead of, fuck, what's Belle's father's name? Maurice. Maurice. Yeah, Maurice. Um, instead of just having like him be like the quirky inventor where Belle just kind of hangs around, mm-hmm. Belle's the quirky inventor. Yay! So, uh, yeah, uh, that's, I'm good with that. Uh-huh. I am good with that adjustment. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it looks really pretty. Uh-huh. Um, I'm excited for it. Mm-hmm. I definitely want to see Luke Evans as Gaston. Because I think that's going to be brilliant. It's like, I don't think I recognized any of these people other than Emma Watson. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> You should have recognized two of the voices. Lumiere is Ewan McGregor. Oh, right. Cogs- Cogsworth is uh, Ian uh, McKellen. Yeah, okay, I knew that. Yeah, yeah, I can't, I can't. I'm I'm excited. I'm I'm trepidatious just because it is my favorite Disney movie, so I'm uh, like, uh, are they going to fuck up my favorite thing? But Who's voicing Mrs. Potts? Should they, because they feel like whoever it is, if they didn't, they should have just kept it Angela Lansbury. I actually right? think it might be Angela Lansbury. Good! <laughs> Let me double check, but I do think she might be one of the only returning cast. I mean, Good, that like would it make should so much be. fucking sense. Like she is Mrs. Spot, Mrs. Spots. <laughs> like if she, like she just is. Oh, and like Angela Lansbury is one of those people that I constantly forget exists, mm-hmm. and then like she she oh. comes up. And... No, sorry, someone equally British though, Emma Thompson. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. I also okay. love Emma Thompson. Yeah. I love Emma Thompson a lot. All right. So. I might let that one slide. But okay. <laughs> I do love her. Yeah, I'm going to watch the hell out of that movie, too. Yes, I believe she was the original. Um, what's her fucking face from Sweeney Todd? <laughs> Angela Lansbury was the uh, original Mrs. Lovett. Yes. That that's her fucking face. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so then we have that. Uh-huh. Uh, we also have the fact that John Boyega posted a photo on Instagram um, relating uh-huh. to the Pacific Rim sequel. Yay! Uh, apparently, it's going to be called Maelstrom. Yay! Um, and I can't wait. No, I like. <laughs> yep. I, I'm gonna just uh, give me more John Boyega in my life, please. Like just in any capacity, just more. Thank you. Yeah, I took a screenshot of this and completely neglected to put any kind of like when this was. Oh, I, okay, I sent this to you on Thursday, and I think that's when I saw it. Yeah, it's um, very recent. Yeah, and he he just captioned it: first day on Pacific Rim today. Here's to a great adventure ahead. So I guess Yay. as of Thursday, they're actually starting to get this moving. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Yay. 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 Woo! Yay. And then more local news, sort of. Mm. It's local, but everybody knows and loves Joe Manganiello. Seriously, have you seen him? Because <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't, go to the Google. And he is, he's from, he's actually from the same borough as Kirsten. Yeah, he actually went to Mount Lebanon High School, my high school. He survived it well. So did you. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And as of today, Uh November 15th, he Uh has been named uh, to the Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh Foundation's Board of Trustees because he's also a cinnamon roll. Yes, he really is. He, I love him. I love him so much. (laughs) I met him. I wanted to feed him food. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you him. said he's a lot smaller than he looks in I think pictures. it's just like 
because you think the muscles would be bulky, uh. but they're lean. <laughs> so uh. in my mind, I was expecting like a tank, and he's just he's he is lean and fit and cut, and I love him. Okay. <laughs> Still want to feed him food though, but I mean, I do want to feed food Chris Evans food too. So, I mean, there's no bi- there's no means that either of them are small. So, <laughs> I'm not calling you small, Joe. Don't worry. Still love you. All right. So that takes us into State of Things, which is currently being replaced. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> if if you wanted to hear us rant for hours on end, we can. But text you me, don't. Call me. I will rant with anyone that wants to listen. Yeah, but chances are you don't, and um, we actually currently legitimately don't have time for exactly. that. Exactly. Um, because the insert movie reference here podcast is supposed to start recording in eight minutes. Nope. So, eight minutes of memes. Go. <laughs> um, so yes, currently uh-huh. we are going to add a segment, and as and this uh-huh. for but we're going to add a temporary new segment, which yes. this week will be uh, coming with the temporary removal of state of things right called what do you know joe yeah um because joe biden memes are Uh taking the internet by storm and oh dear god do we love them yeah basically the only thing that's getting me through life right now um they're my favorite thing yeah um i desperately want to know what how they feel about these memes yeah um that will if that ever comes out if there is any kind of direct um addressing mm. of these memes by either joe biden and or barack obama mm. that's not even going to state of things that's going to fangirling yeah so. <laughs> like I, I really want to know what joe's favorites are right i, I gotta know yeah so we each picked three this uh-huh. week um so, so hard yeah don't, don't worry though though we'll pro- there will probably be more yeah i don't think we can i don't think we can even attempt to do state of things for a while in, if we do, though, it's going to be slow going. So yeah. we're going to... So that we can cut out the screaming in post. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, number one, go. All right, mine is Obama. Joe, can you please explain all the cheetahs that are in the kitchen? Biden, I don't want Trump to feel, Joe, lonely. <laughs> uh, my first one involves uh, Joe Biden sitting in a chair. Um, they're at a desk and... and uh, Obama's kind of hovering over him with, with, with paperwork, and uh, it's Barack, sign here and here, Joe, and then the adoption is final and you and Michelle are my parents, Barack, no Joe. Next! <laughs> Biden. So this is a picture of Joe Biden hugging Hillary Clinton while Barack Obama gestures wildly. Biden. Hillary was saying they took all the W's off the keyboards when Bush won. Obama. Joe put... Biden, I took the T's. They can only type rump. <laughs> um, my second, one of my absolute favorites, is uh, it's just uh, Biden uh, standing in between Barack and Michelle. Um, just chilling like bros do. And uh, Biden, I found a cool new apartment for us downtown. Obama, Joe, Michelle and I are, Michelle covers Obama's mouth, are so excited! <laughs> <laughs> My next and last one for this week is a picture of Joe Biden and Barack Obama um, sitting together, um, and it goes, Obama, didn't think he'd be late. Biden, I gave him the wrong address. Obama, <laughs> Joe, he's the president-elect. Biden, I don't give a fuck what they call him. <laughs> that's a good one. Because I, I like figured that I, that's also, you know, not my president. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then my final one for the week is, uh, it's a picture of Joe Biden and a very, looking, uh, inquisitively at a very stone-faced Hillary Clinton. Can you blame her? <laughs> um, Biden, what if I just played it from my phone real quick? Hillary, we're not playing the Imperial March when he gets here, Joe. To which I say, why not? I, I, I feel <laughs> like he might anyway, eventually. Like, maybe, like, as he's leaving the White House, he just plays it and walks out and, like, looks at him, like... <laughs> Also, uh, please do yourself a favor and take a moment to go to the Refinery29 Facebook mm. and look at their video, Barack Obama and Joe Biden Friendship Moments. It's just so sweet and so pure mm. and so beautiful. The fucking friendship bracelets and the sunglasses. I can't. I will miss their bromance so badly. Please give us an unscripted sitcom when they leave office that will ease the pain slightly. Right. 
<laughs> but we also need to keep it non-political for a moment here, too, because our feels. So we still crave that regular meme roll. Oh, we're supposed to be keeping it not political, even with the not <laughs> memes? I'm sorry. <laughs> I done fucked it up. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, what is it anyway? It's, it's still pre- it's pretty damn funny, though. Um, so it's Captain America grabbing an unknown body, placing two pieces of bread on either side of their face going what are you (laughs) to which the faceless figure turns around and has election 2016 written on it and it (laughs) goes it it eats sandwich because captain america is displeased (laughs) okay the real one and the fictional one honestly basically any use of idiot sandwich or anything else gordon ramsay has ever said yeah 2016 (laughs) <laughs> well, mine is not so positive as well, so... Um, ah! <laughs> it was originally posted by Scott's Trooper on Tumblr. Um, I feel like this is a Food Network thing. Like, I feel like this is, like, a Food Network show and a host I should recognize. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Do you know who that is? Can't remember his name because brains. <laughs> Fair enough. But I guess that's a yes, but the... Yes is yep. useless. Yep. Okay. Um, but yes, you're right. Food Network. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the the um, the header is my emotions, which is followed by an image of some guy on apparently I was corrected. It's a Food Network show uh-huh. opening up a cabinet, a cabinet, and displaying what he describes as that is a beautiful array of salt. <laughs> so many different kinds and in mass quantity. <laughs> So, um, yes, thank you for listening to another episode of Scenario Store News. Um, if, uh, if you want to help us out a bit, um, be really super awesome because we're poor millennials. Um, we do have a Patreon because every single podcast on this network, actually, we have to pay out of pocket to make them happen. And we do it because we love to do it. But, um, we could also, you know, always use the help. Um, we do have incentives. We're not just asking for free money, um, Anything you could throw us would help us out a lot at patreon.com slash sdcn, sdcn as in Sinister Dreamcast Network. Um, another thing you could do that would help us out a lot if you're listening to us on iTunes is rate um, slash review us. You don't even necessarily have to review us, just rate us. Like, please, please. help us uh, get our numbers up, get our, uh, our whatever, however they factor things into algorithms to like you know make us pop up on pages or whatever just do the things make us make us more visible please Please. um and while you're there uh you can go to that little search bar in the top right hand corner and type in sinister dreamcast network and you will find all of the wonderful things that lie therein i will never get over how much kirsten (laughs) likes me saying that Um, i can't help it every monday is happiness is a warm gun every tuesday is toxic volume every wednesday oh hi there it's us every thursday is the insert movie reference to your podcast every Friday is the original flagship Sinister Dreamcast and of course every third Saturday of the month which will fucking be on time this month um, is our spinoff Black Emporium News which is this level of ranting and salt and wonder but specifically about Dragon Age um (laughs) So, for another episode of Scenario Store News, I am Juliana, because Anders.tumblr.com. And I'm Kirsten, you can find me at kayth1.tumblr.com. All on Z. Geronimo. You have been listening to the Sinister Dreamcast Network. For more from Sinister Dream Productions, check out www.sinisterdream.com.